Anyways, welcome to the Paracast. I'm your host, Tomas the Boss Fernandez. Joining me tonight and only tonight, the real reason. Oh, hold on, where's my freaking name? The real reason Taylor Swift can't get over a man, Robert Wyatt. Hey, Taylor made like a hundred or so songs talking about like all these bad boyfriends, but she never made one song about her making a sandwich for that guy. Yeah, you know what? You're damn right. And all they got all these I mean, women. I got to live I mean, my maybe, best maybe life. Maybe if she'd made a few sandwiches, she wouldn't have man troubles. Just saying. Maybe. Maybe. But she's freaking gorgeous, and so that's why everyone still dates her. And mm. she's super rich. Oh, man. You got to – And apparently – and apparently she's playing in the Super Bowl tonight. Yeah, apparently. apparently. I, don't know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything more than that, but apparently she's playing or but, somebody yeah. that she knows is playing. Yeah, it, imagine being the kid of those two people. You're just like, oh, I don't have to do anything ever. Oh, how amazing yeah. would that be? Like being the son Gra of it. Grandma, Grandma Swift um, is going to put an end to that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's just me and Robert here. Everyone's smoking meats and and touching themselves and all the stuff that they do on a Sunday while smoking their meats. While smoking that's, their meats. that's that's it's all it's all smoking meat. You know, you know, it's all gay. Anyways, I I Kenny, after Kenny lo Kenny loves smoking the smoking the sausage. <laughs> after uh, after a five month hiatus, I went off and shot some USPSA. Uh, I yesterday. saw you did that. Awesome, yeah. I, uh, let me, let me say is I got to shoot with my friends, Dan Ward and Blake, and I, I, I loved it. There were some new shooters there. It was fun. Um, but I will, I will tell you this when it's 28 degrees and we're clearing ice from the shooting areas. I was just like, why? Like I, I could have gone and I could have gone six months and probably had right. a, a slightly better experience than I did. It was freezing cold. It was I mean, it was it was cold, cold. I mean, we still got done by twelve fifteen in the afternoon, which wasn't that bad. But it was, it was uncomfortable and almost un. For me, like some of the spots, like I've been out a lot outside. I work outside for twenty two years. This was kind of like, why, why am I doing this? And I can tell there's a little bit of me who's getting a little soft being in the tractor. Is like, oh, it's slightly cold outside. <laughs> Just just turn on the the freight liners heater till you start sweating and just be like, oh, I'll crack the windows instead of turning the heat down, you know, to get an airflow going. But like last night, yeah, I mean yesterday it was cold. But I went out there and I shot. I got some black tape and occluded the old Siley bowl, which is kind of counterproductive to have the biggest window possible and then occlude the whole thing. And did you have to get like like a, a twenty four by thirty six uh, black piece of poster board to yeah, cover I had the entire I had, thing? I had to buy a tent over at Target and then cut it up <laughs> and then tape tape it onto the thing. I, I was showing yeah. people, I was like, oh, this, and they'd be like, what is that optic? Because for some people in the know, like they know what the Siley Bowl is because you know you guys listen to this or you watch like Humble Marksman and stuff like that. So there's some people who do know about the Siley Bowl, and then there's other people who are like, what? what is this thing? And then you show them, they're like, oh my gosh. And so it has, uh, being out and shooting in a competitive environment, it has a couple detractor kind of things on it, which is... Um, it gets hung up going through a doorway? It, yeah, you can't put it through a doorway. It doesn't fit the IDPA box, and uh, it only fits one whole or egg on scramble. Box. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's the... Uh, <laughs> The back, the back, because the window is so wide, it picks up a lot of light from the back. So you oh, get, really, yeah. So you do get kind of a little bit of a glare on the back. Mm. It's kind of like you know, on some of the optics, if the sun's in the right position, you can kind of get a little bit of glare. It doesn't produce a false second. Yeah, the very SROs dark. like that too. Yeah, I mean, you you definitely kind of get it like this. Um, so like on, if you guys are on the YouTube. You can see that there's little cutout slots on the front and on the back to kind of protect the main optic. And so you actually kind of have to like block that with some tape too, which is just kind of a, a thing I would do even if I wasn't shooting it occlude it was to make sure that the uh, the the two portions of the site that are um, meant as a shroud, that you get some tape in there, just kind of block out some light, get yourself a little bit more tint on the window. Uh, the so other thing... Did, I, I saw your video and I was going to ask, I mean, did you put like brown uh, target tape I put the spot. I put the black no shoot tape all around the front, and then I took a piece of white 
um sorry hardcover tape black hardcover tape around the whole front mm-hmm. and then i took a white no sheet tape and then put it around the top on the side to make that's sure what it's I, that's everybody. what i was wondering i i, I couldn't fear i was like he's probably i figured you're and i was gonna ask and i just got busy but you, i had seen that you were shooting and i was like you're probably gonna do it occluded but then i saw that white yeah i thought it was just brown brown but i, I saw that over the top i'm like what in the heck is he doing yeah, it was just it's just literally another piece of tape just to kind of hold all the other tape and make sure because when you have the Siley bowl, you can over tape the entire thing because you have so much room to play with. But the uh, the other thing with it is that um, because the window is so big, um, the amount I would say the amount of per- the perceived movement is much higher when you shoot the gun. Like I could tell mm-hmm. my grip wasn't where it needed to be, but the amount of movement that sometimes may leave the optic or kind of be a little bit weird because you have so much more horizontal and vertical play because the glass is so big and it's projected so wide that you, that it looks bouncier than, than normal that, that that and shooting it off the PDP, which worked 100% flawlessly with the room tact, not the room tactical with the uh, heading base plates, 23 plus one in the gun. We're out the spat, so possibly a twenty-four if I if I get a uh, rune follower in the thing. Um, super accurate. The only thing I wish that I had did uh, from the get-go, I wish when I got a holster from T Rex, I wish I would have gotten a streamlight mounted light on the front, and then Why? the other upgrade would be the uh, Taylor Freelance. Um, but it is it is jumpy. It is jumpier than a Glock. It's very accurate. The trigger is phenomenal. I handed it over to Dan Ward and uh, another friend, Clint, after the match, and they shot it. And they're like, they, they're literally, I took the tape off. They pointed at and he's like, point on any spot, you'll hit it. And they, they take it off, they bang, 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 consistently hitting it. I mean, it, it is a pistol that is so easy to be accurate with, it's ridiculous. But the perceived recoil over something like the Glock 34 or Glock 17 is there and just something to tame it down a little bit would be helpful it 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 shoots so is so i gotta ask because you know this is coming i know it's coming is episode is episode 401 when you finally admit that more weight in the gun more uh, weight more is the way to go i would say this more weight in the gun or like when i had the canic like more weight yes yeah, more weight does help there's there's no getting around it the the problem yeah. is is like um training yourself to deal with the kind of weight but if you have the options, like on the brass backstrap or something like that, something to make yeah. it more shoot like a regular Glock 17 or something else like that, because it is, it shoots, it's a 23 ounce gun or 24 ounce gun. It shoots like it's a, a 16 ounce gun, mm-hmm. but it does return very, very well. It returns extremely well to the point where you're, where you're going to, it's just, there's a lot of movement in it while you shoot it, but it was accurate. Didn't shoot any D's, didn't shoot any mics. Very easy to use. I mean, it was it was a great, a great time to go out there and shoot it. And it just kind of confirmed the fact I really like this thing and I shoot it well. So I was happy. I came in fifth place because of the the current crop of carry optic shooters at Slipsa is very, very good. And I'm out oh, yeah. of practice. I think at my best, I probably could have gotten to like 93%. I could have found 5% there looking at my videos and looking at how I split the gun and doing all that stuff that, you know, you, I, well, you, were you forget. Splitting, you were splitting it slower than, I, than I've seen you do it historically. But, I mean, that's yeah. been five months of not really getting out and shooting. Yeah. And the other thing that showed up was the slide back from CHPWS for my, uh, my VP9. And so this, this thing is freaking awesome. I love it. It's great. The the it's heavier. I mean, even without the light on, it feels heavier, more substantial than the PDP. It is accurate as all get out. I would say that the slight edge goes to the PDP. Um, but the CHPWS guys, they cut it for an acro cut, and I put a Steiner MPS on it, and it is fantastic. The standard factory night sights co witness with the uh, with the optic. The optic sits nice and low. The nice thing about the Steiner and the Acro is that the batteries on the top are on the side. And so it the and the Steiner projects from the top. And so it sits very, very low in whatever cut you get. So you can kind of co-witness with factory sites. 
The grip feels amazing. The trigger is pretty good, slightly heavier than everything else. The color matching with the light and with the optic, I mean, it just turned out to be a fantastic little gun. And I got, you know, six more mags for my P30 and for this thing. So for selling a Gen 5 MOS and basically coming away with this thing, this kit completely uh, scratched, paid for just to trade across, I was super happy with it. And so it'll be so fun to go out and shoot, shoot this thing. Um, because I want to get I want to get the PDP a chance. Like I, sure. I'm going to go shoot the PDP, and that's the gun that I've been messing around with and practicing the most. I mean, I even I even bought I haven't gotten a thing of grip lotion in a while. The liquid grip. Oh, you got ghost jizz. Yeah, the the ghost the ghost jizz. Try to get some get that off my get it off my mouth. I was trying to make my teeth white. I promise. You'll, you'll, you'll have to talk to Kenny about about how to get that off because you know apparently he's smoking meat still. Smoking. So he's, <laughs> he's probably got a lot of uh, experience. Let's pour it all over his face. It's in his eyes. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been messing Wait, around with this, and so like I really I really do enjoy the VP9, and I was kind of sitting there holding this thing. I was like, I don't know if I want to get rid of it, but like I'm 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 playing around with something else, and I was thinking. You know what? Our good friend Zach Harbrink needs to come shoot CO. And I I just need to put this in a little bag and say, here, Zach, borrow this for a little bit. You go play around in CO for the winter, see if you like it. And then if you want to buy it at the end, let me know. So I was going to send him a message to see if he would like to do it. But if if you guys are in the hunt, the PDP is still – the PDP is excellent. It is, it is really – and you could, get, you could get the PDP. You could get the Taylor Freelance Backstrap. And still be cheaper than what you would be into for a Gen Five Glock. The the hard thing about it is that I mean you see so many people trying to carry the water for the fact that it's an extremely snappy gun. Yes, it is and, snappy. And it's like, okay, well, this is a very sucky element of this gun, but everybody's I don't want to say shilling for it because it's not right the right word, but they're really really trying hard to offset. The idea that this gun's extremely snappy and it's like well it's an extremely snappy gun but if you buy this and do this and do this and pretty soon you're doing the same things i did to a shadow too where it was very nose heavy so you put it in the put back, it back and then yes and it's back heavy now you got to put it in the front and you're just playing this there's, game of back and forth well there's perfect options out there everyone and they're all twenty two hundred dollars like if you yeah, want to get sure. that cz shadow a whatever it is like that that has the standard dust cover that's yeah. cu the cz custom shop like you can do that they make an $1,800 Walther PDP that has a steel frame. Like, you can go play that game if you want to. But the the one thing is, I would say about that, it's just like with the CZ. Like, there are things that you do to them because what they bring to the table is so good that it outweighs, like, the snappiness of the gun. Right. It really does. Like, it, it, is, it is very easy to hit three-inch objects at 20 yards with the, like the PDP and the ammo that you're producing, like it, it just will do it. It, it is a fantastically accurate and reliable pistol. And I would put it on par at least uh, so far with like what I shot out of a Glock 17. Like it is much right. easier to make the hits with this gun, but it, the Glock 17 is easier, slightly easier to shoot faster with. So it's, it is really good. I think Steger, uh, Ben Steger, I, I don't know if it was a week ago, at this point, but just a little bit ago, you can look it up on his YouTube channel, put out, it was just an excellent video where he shot the shadow two and then he shot a uh, Glock 34 and he, he made the point. He's like, you know, this is the shadow two, the shadow two, it does this more easily. And can you do this with the Glock 34? Yeah, you can. It just takes a lot more work. Yep. But, it does, but I mean, he's, you can still shoot the gun, both guns, extremely i mean extremely efficiently and i mean ben is you know he's a world champion dude knows what he's talking about and so when he says you know you can do both of these things um you kind of have to listen because a lot of it really does come back to the to the things like yes you're going to have to work harder to make a mnp or a pdp or whatever uh do the thing you want it to do than a super heavy heavyweight gun but you know it's yep. not it's it's possible it's very possible to do and so it's all it's it's kind of nice because it really does come back to the what is that saying it's not the arrow it's the indian or something like that yeah 
Yeah, and there's and there's but they, there's there's nice ways to get and weight into the handgun such if you need to get weight into them. There's weight oh, sure. there's way to just get weight into a CZ seventy five. And the other two is like if I like if I sat there and I went, okay, like I want I'm just gonna go get a CZ seventy five Shadow Two. I'm gonna go find one for nine hundred dollars. I'm going to go to Robert. Robert's going to give me 17 magazines he has lying around or whatever like that. I already have the, I just need a, a holster you can get from anyone. Like, you know, you just go, you sell this, you sell that, you sell that. You go have it milled by someone, cut a cut a delta point hole in the top of it, and you just go, and we're I wonder, off. I wonder, if, I wonder if Josh Dobson could do that, could cut uh, Shadow 2, because it's, it's got such a unique top um, that... Who was at Impact did the one for, did the one for me, uh, and a lot of people were kind of like they're like I don't want to cut a, sh- uh, a SRO into a Shadow Two, but yeah, I wonder if Josh could do that. That'd be that's an interesting question to ask. Yeah, it'd, it'd be nice to have have another another optic uh, yep. Shadow Two, and there's, especially if you could direct mill it. And but then the, you're you're playing with a different game with Shadow Two with springs. And you're playing a different game of shadows with this extractor and making sure extractors are cleaned out and stuff like that. Like there's there's no there's no free lunch anywhere in designs. Exactly. You know, if you if you yeah. get it for half the price, it's probably half the weight. So, but I I I honestly I had a great time. I'm super excited so awesome. about going out here and shooting this. I found Taylor Freelance makes base pads and Rune Tactical is working on a prototype for P30 VP9 followers. And so it kind of seems like a great time to kind of get in there. And honestly, you have those guns that you hold and you grab and you go like, oh, this fits me. Like, awesome. The the, the PDP feels a little bit thin in the grips, mm-hmm. um, but the VP9 feels feels great. It feels very much like I felt with the uh, PX4. And, yeah. uh, and I will always have a VP9 or a PX4 because I'm not paying $1,500 for a PX4. This all said and done well, was six hundred and twenty dollars. I sold my Glock for six fifty. Like it, it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just not there. You just have to deal with the fact that the magazine release is uniquely yes suboptimally different from what we have in America, and that's not a bad thing. It's just a difference. Yeah, and so like when I was waiting and watching some stuff, I have to hold on. Yeah. Tipping. It'd be hilarious if you fell over in your camp chair. It would not be hilarious in my camp chair. And it's got a microphone attached to it, so it's a studio chair. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> but um We've upped our game, so up yours. We've uh so I have this T-Rex light bearing holster, which is great, and then I was running these ghost pouches and I have them set for bullets out, and so I'm sitting okay. there and I'm just you know, sitting over the couch watching a YouTube video, click magazine new magazine in click magazine out magazine in click so almost trying to like uh uh, trying to acclimate and practice with the uh, bullets out and the magazine release at the same time why'd you go bullets out um just for funsies to try give it a try if i run if i i could take this rifle mag pouch but three bullets out i can sit there and try honestly the the nice thing about those ghost pouches is they come bullets out or bullets forward so I can easily yep. go like, I'm an idiot. I'm going to go back to the bullets forward. I, I could understand it on a production basis. If you were running production, running five or six, having them nose out, it seems to be work a little bit better. I'm I'm seeing if it's worth it or if I just literally take the screwdriver to it today and then switch them all to bullets forward and then run them like that. The farther back you go, the more bullets out tend to yes. have a really strong place. Uh, if you're shooting CO and you're only doing one reload, uh, just pick one. It doesn't matter. I mean, yep. anything you do, you can learn in all of like two or three seconds. The nicest thing about bullets out is that you're, is when you're reaching farther back, your, your hand is staying very consistent as it comes back in. That's the biggest advantage, but where there's only one reload yep, kind of doesn't matter as much. It almost feels like I should just run two bullets forward and then the, they're back third. The emergency. Oh shit. No. Mm-hmm. What has happened? What is happening to me? Parachute button should be bullets out. So I'll probably just try to yeah. sit there and shift it over to that. But anyway, what'd you do? Well, not much this week. I I actually went down to uh, Las Vegas with Andrea. Um, there was the U two concert at that uh, Sphere. Oh, and you're the so you're the we second went... person I know that went there. It's they, really amazing. They her 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 complaint was my friend's complaint was. 
nobody was in the show like celebrating the music as much as they were celebrating the experience of being in there. Like it was more of an experience than a concert is is basically what she she said. Okay. Okay. Um well, I don't I don't particularly like or dislike you two. They just exist to me. Yeah, um, I don't I don't have a I don't have a strong one way or the other. Uh I know a lot of their older catalogs, but uh Andrea, she she loves them. And years ago we we wanted to she wanted to go to a concert when they were here and we just didn't have the money. And so it was kind of always one of those things like, well, you know, we're going to find a way to get get her to one of the concerts. And so we went down there. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, they they put on a great show. The sphere is no is absolutely insane. It really I remember is. showing you guys that like in July or whatever when I was down in Vegas and they were still building it and prototyping it and they made it look like the moon at night. And like, yeah, it is it is something it is something to behold. And just yeah, the hum really it puts off when you're walking around it. You're just like, holy hell. Yeah. The inside of it is is nothing short of breathtaking. When the coolest uh, thing, when they were they were playing a song and they actually so you're sitting there watching and they, they take it and it made it they, they like remove the walls. Right. So it looked like you're actually looking um, past them to the outside of the uh, the sphere and you're seeing like cars and stuff that are driving past yeah. and, and what have you. And it's just it's just plain as day, and it was really really cool. But they're a great they're a great band. There's there's no taking away from them. I mean, I uh, like my favorite U2 song. I wish they would have played, which was Angel of Harlem. But uh, it was cool. I haven't been down to Vegas since 2005, and I mean everything has changed. Oh yeah. And yep. But no, it's nice when you're walking the strip and walking along, and you're walking by some bushes, and a homeless person just sticks out, just crawls right out. You're just like, oh, isn't that wonderful? And said, oh, they're like, like San Francisco. Yeah, you're like Michael, walk on the other side of me, please. Like, please walk yeah. on the street side because that's the safer side now because of all these homeless people. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's something else. But uh, I think I think all told, we we walked. I think it was like twenty seven, twenty eight miles um, over the over the three days we were there. Yeah, and um, had a great time. So good, had a great time. Did you carry? No, we flew down there, and it is that is the weirdest thing. Like at no point do I ever really. I mean, this it's the weirdest thing because like I'm so used to carrying a gun. Like I wake up in the morning, I put the gun on, I have my little pocket knife, my EDC pocket knife that I always have. I'm used to carrying that, and when I don't have it, I I notice the absence of the weight, and. People are like, well, are you afraid of getting jumped or something like that? No, there's enough people there that I'm not really concerned about it. But at the same time, I walk around and I'm like, I wish I had my gun. I wish I had my gun. Nope. I mean, like, I'm not going to need it. Statistically speaking, I'm never going to need it. But I still want it. Oh, I I, in case. I, I was so happy because I was carrying my Glock 19 with my TLR1 and my, uh, yeah, the Steiner, basically the same thing that this VP9 became. Um, yeah. and I, cause I was just like out there, I was like, oh, their CCW permit, my, my CCW permit for Utah works down there in Clark County. So I was just like, all right, yeah. cool. I'm going to walk around. And I was so happy. I was just walking around there. Like it was still 110 degrees. It's a big setup. I wish I carried something smaller, like a, something without the light when I was doing all that walking, uh, with that T-Rex sidecar on. But I was just, I was happy to have it because I was just like, oh, like, there's a lot like we're we're pretty, I would say sheltered being in like Salt Lake at like Provo, Utah, just being like, and eh, nothing's really like someone's got to be pretty nuts to go nuts down there. And then you're walking around in Las Vegas, it goes, oh, everyone's on the brink of insanity. That's what this is. <laughs> like they'll do anything for money. Okay, let's let's be a little bit yeah. more hesitant and careful. So, well, no, it was great. It was great fun. It was it was a lot of fun. We got home. We got home. What was it? Uh, Thursday night. And um, I had signed up for the match, and then uh, Mercedes is like, "I need, I need help with the the horses." Like, kicked out one of the walls in the barn. I'm like, oh, "Okay, fine." Saturday, so Saturday, I, I withdrew. Saturday went and helped her take care of that, but um, probably ended up being a good thing because it like snowed and rained all day on uh, Friday and turned slips it into a giant uh, ice skating rink slash mud puddle. Yep. In the afternoon, there were some of them where I was just clunking mud, and then I was, I, I thought. <laughs> brain activated i got up this morning and i was just like 
let's take a trash bag, let's put it in the backpack, and let's bring an extra pair of shoes. So when I was getting in the GLI, I just slipped off the muds, put them in the, the trash bag, put on the uh, ultras, and drove out of there. That's smart. Oh, and here's the other thing. Here, so this is instant karma, everyone. Instant karma. So there's a there's a spray car wash, and I was spraying off the GLI yesterday. There's a spray car wash, and uh, it's one of those where you don't go through the car wash. You actually take the brush, and you do all the work yourself in the, in the jet. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there, and I go in there, and the only available stall has like two inches of caked mud. Like someone went off-roading, and then washed all their off-road vehicle off. And then it was literally caked on the bottom. So as soon as you drive over, your tires are getting full of dirt. They're going to oh, spray geez. back on there. And I'm like, oh. And then I looked over at the meter. I was like, oh, he never hit stop on the meter. All right. <laughs> I'll clean up your mess. And so I just left the GLI out, and I took the power br- uh, washer, and I washed all that crap down the drain, took the big rocks, that threw them boy. in the trash, washed it all out, washed it out. He probably left when he had like $9 on the meter, and it auto offs at 15 Go fuck yourself, dude. You clean up your mess. <laughs> That's your payment. That's your payment. I did not put one drop of water on my own vehicle. I'll do that. I'll do that. But I was Batman. I was Justice. I I sprayed that thing out, got all that dirt moved out there, took the brush, the freaking brush, that's the foam brush that you wipe your car down with. It had a bunch of rocks in it because he didn't clean it out and he was using it to do other stuff. That scratched the crap out of someone else's car. So I sprayed that off with the power washer. Yeah, you never ever use those brushes in the pool, like ever. Oh, ever I, in a million bazillion years, you you never use those things because you don't know what other people did to them. Yeah, correct. And yeah. it's basically just you may you may as well just take a Brillo pad and scrub your car with that. Yeah, take your own take your own microfiber cloth, take your bucket, wipe down everything, then take it over there, spray it off. That's yeah, that's the way to roll. Anywho's yeah, hundred percent. The way other way to roll is check out Dominate Defense. Get a belt, get a Mach One speed belt, get a carry belt, get anything you need to satisfy all your belt needs. Those pants need holding up, but what needs held up more? You thinking about your gun? I'm not going to say your gun. That drip. That drip has to be supported. Support your drip. Get the finest drip in the industry. Check it out. Dominate defense. She's probably is that a, is that an age thing? Because what? I mean, like, like maybe I'm not getting it. Like like when you start getting old, I mean, you know, like when you take and you go pee, you know, it doesn't all come out. So there's a little bit of drip. Or is there like some like newfangled kid thing that drip means something different? Drip, drip is I style. That's that clothes. That's that clothes, the drip. You know, that's what that is. And so, speak, so yes, I'm officially old. At this point. I will tell you this. I would, you know, when you think you're never going to get old and you're sitting there and you're urinating, it's like, I don't get what guys have to shake, dude. It all comes out. It all comes out. <laughs> and then you start having like, you're just like, wow, I, I think I put that away too early. Oh. Oh, no. No. It's me. It's me. I wasn't supposed to get old. I wasn't supposed to get back problems. Uh, it's not supposed to happen this it's way. It's not supposed to happen to I me. I need to talk to the manufacturer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, all right. And while you're looking up uh, male kegel exercises <laughs> to prevent your urine from dripping down, you can also check out um, Rune Tactical W74 Guide Rods. Uh, get some more weight in the gun. Get a plus one in the gun. Check those. Makes fa- you think about uh, mag followers like urine running down your leg. Now, man, you want to make sure you get plus one. Get that strength up. Clinch. Uh, do all that stuff. The same promo code P A R A one zero. And check out Waypoint Tactical on Instagram. You can follow Jared's uh, company and find classes and sign up for them when they're available. Also, you can check out the Halo shirts. Sorry, not Halo. Science fiction all-terrain vehicle with a uh, minigun on the back. You ship, you'll ship those right to your house. I think they're 25 bucks. Anyways, Telegram, you can ask us questions. We'll do our best to answer on this Super Bowl Sunday. There's a Super Bowl? Oh, no, right. Yeah, there's. there's... Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the best rifle for cowboy action competition? Uh, the one that goes under your chin. Do not shoot cowboy <laughs> action. Next question. Is USPSA going to allow us to take our belts off with an unloaded gun in the holster? I uh, they, ideally, yeah. I they think talked about it. I think a an unloaded gun, because no one's going to like suffer the DQ unless they're completely arrogant. But like the unloaded gun belt outside the porta potty, that should that be should allowed. Be a thing. That should, should very much be a thing. That should be allowed. Yeah. The the um well, yeah, I mean, think about, I mean, just think about it logically just for a, for a minute. If the only difference between a gun 
um, in a gun belt, an unloaded gun in a gun belt, being a DQ event is like four blue colored walls that you know you know we can't see through. Then are we really saving anybody at that point? Well, yeah, and it's not like I've never gone into the porta potty, took my gun, and took it out of the holster, or put my holster down on it. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the exactly. same. You should be able to. And plus, mm-hmm. when you have to go, you have to go. And so, yeah. like, if you, if getting across to a freaking safe area or bagging your gun and doing nine to ten different things, no, you should be able to live like by the safe area or even outside by the stage. You should be able to, dude, can you watch this and strip the gun, put it on the ground, mm-hmm. go do your thing that you have to do, and I that's that should be allowed. We got leg straps finally, so. Yeah, that one. It, it, it's funny. It's funny how, and, and I get it, right, where you, if, you're, if you're a company, you have to defend the decision of the company, even when the decision isn't really, a, or, the, or the rule isn't really a good one. It's, but it was funny how, you saw uh, the RMs defend the the thigh straps until they decided not to defend them and to remove them. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, this is actually a dumb idea. We know you've been saying this for the past umpteen years and we're going to get rid of it. And it's like, thank you. Yeah. Because every single new shooter match I ever did, like people would come in with thigh straps. You get them all the time. T-Rex Arms just sells them. Yep. And having to tell them, look, this is a rule. You can't have this. But I just want you to know, if you show up to a match and somebody comes up and tells you, tells you that you can't have it, just say thank you and walk away. Yep. Because fundamentally, you are safer drawing with this thigh strap on that you have practiced with than having you take it off and having it dangling all over the place. Exactly. Just like yeah. you got. Yeah. And so, like, the one thing, too, it's like what I notice is, like, the uh, using the same holster on, the, on two different setups, using the T-Rex arms ragnarok holster on a boss hanger nice thing about the t-rex holster you can hang it on a boss hanger or a safari land pattern and then putting it on the safari land mount with the leg strap one mm-hmm. of them is way more secure way more stable and faster it less binding on the equipment and it's just like the the ben steger pro shop hanger it's a fantastic hanger the hanning hanger they are fantastic hangers but they are very complex solutions for solving a problem that a little piece of fabric going on your around your leg solves pretty damn quick. Yeah. And so it's, I, I, that, I think that one will, will move an area of equipment in another direction because you have a lighter, more secure, better setup just because the rules now allow it. So I think I'm all for it, but yeah, there's a, there's going to be some switches. And I think in the way, even some of the faster guys, once they give it a try, will be like, oh, this this is very awesome. This works very well. Yeah. No, I think I think it's I think it's a good move. And it's nice it's nice to see him finally it's nice to see him finally kind of like admit that the world has moved on and we're not a bunch of militia or, you know, leather strap holster guys trying to take on things, which was the whole reason for it in the first place. It's good. It's a good move. Yep. Uh, let's see from Kevin Isaac. Uh, what's the best shot timer? Discussing shot timer innovation over the last five years. Mine still mine still works, so I haven't even looked into all the other stuff. I still see basically see the pack timers. Like no one uses a CED seven thousand but me anymore. Um, so I haven't seen yeah, it. But there's some uh, nice timers out there, like still. the the commanders. And what's the nice bigger one that everyone's starting to run around with now? Well, the commander commander's the bit is the good one. Uh, who is it? Who makes the blue the blue colored ones? They have a Bluetooth version now. The pack um, that or the it? pro timer uh, C C E D C E D oh, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the old the ones that we always had at Slipsa and uh, uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, the farm uh, they have a Bluetooth version that now syncs up. Basically, any if you put out a timer today that doesn't actually record. Um, splits and have some means to transmit that to the uh, practice score, it's not worth buying. Um, I think I think for practice, um, I think for practice, the best shot timer on the market right now is the one that Ken Nelson Ken Nelson developed. Oh, it's for the iWatch. For the for the iOS uh, watch, I don't I don't use the iOS watch 
but my wife my wife had a spare one, and so I, I when I take it out when I go out to practice, um, I take that watch. I mean, I, I, I it's her old one, so I just take it. It's amazing. I mean, you put it on you put it on your wrist, you shoot, you do your stuff. It has all the data right there, and uh, if you have an Apple Watch, I, there I'm sure they're going to start porting it for other ones, but right now it works for the the iOS. If you have that, it just makes everything work. It's it's exceptionally well designed and they charge it's you can but you can get the app for basically free but you can upgrade it or you, what do you call it you can do buy-in or whatever they call that thing like forty dollars for a lifetime and uh for ken nelson ken and brian nelson for all the effort that they put into developing this for the marines uh it is worth every forty dollars you're going to spend on it yep and uh, i i absolutely love it i i would you could almost talk me into it if it came on an Android watch for me to go spend the money and get an Android watch. If it came on a Garmin watch, then I'd go buy a Garmin watch and then run it on that. But like it's it's pretty awesome. And what a month they've had because like the what they put on about uh USPSA trying to uh what would you say? Um what were they trying to do? Create a patent tra- trademark, trademark hit, hit factor. Hit yeah, and then so come after everybody and then literally ken nelson's like oh yeah we're just gonna like if that happens we're just gonna change the name the time to the uh to a different name so it can't be pulled it's just like ken nelson ken nelson is doing the lord's work right now with uspsa and his whole his whole little thing he sent to them maybe they should worry about fixing problems instead of coming after asinine solutions like that it's like good on you man yeah, that's that's kind of a weird thing too because it's like I mean, what was the value in going after the the hit factor? And it's al- it's almost this idea of like somebody at some point in history is like, "Hey, we got to go do this for some reason." Cuz nobody just pulls this out of the thin air and is like, "Hey, let's go and trademark hit factor." And like this is the hard thing is like did they do this just to go after the clubs? That's kind of the impression that you get. Yeah, that's exactly what it would be exactly yeah. what it would be but but that's and if, if you're trying to be fair across the whole if you're trying to be fair across the whole scheme of things you're like use psa is many things tone deaf is one of them but completely effing stupid no nah, they can't be that bad but no. then they do this and you're like, Ugh, well, that's and let's not good at all. and let's be clear about USPSA. From all the information that we know, that Yemen wasn't told about it, Ben Barry wasn't oh, yeah. told about it, Frank Rizzi. I wonder why they weren't told about it. Well, see, that's why to me, I can't help but think that this thing has been happening for longer than they they were around. Like, I and I and I don't know. I don't know how trademark. I don't know if like you file for a trademark thing. And then it takes many years. I don't know any of that stuff, but it's like somebody, somebody in the organization had to have done this, and they they just did it on their own, or else they did it with a directive that was you know two or two or three years old or some weird thing like that. And, and I, I really I really want to see USPSA come out and try and like thread that needle because I I don't understand it. And that, like I said, there's a part of me that's like, okay, I'm sure there's probably a logical explanation because nobody could be that dumb to try and trademark the term hit factor after the after you know a chunk of the membership or like, hey, uh, we're gonna just go do hit factor matches. Nobody could be that dumb. Well, you know, it's not like they take legal advice for someone who's not able to practice in their own state. Oh, he he can pra- he can practice. Uh, Jim Jim can practice in uh, Alabama or whatever. Yeah, but he's he can't practice in uh, Washington. Washington. And, uh, and he's yeah, but, he, <laughs> but I don't think I don't think he actually is. I mean, he may not be. He know. might be, but the organization it, it's just it's but all it just looks it's bad. all it's sideways. The damn optics. It doesn't look bad. It is bad. You don't go after try to trademark hit factor and then go after no, everybody no, bad for sure. Yeah, you don't you don't you don't do that. Yeah, just. And like anybody who knows anything about, I mean, there's been a bunch of like uh, business people that have like chimed in on this, and they're all like, uh, "Yeah, if we did this thing, it, we've we've looked into this, and the amount of time and money it would take for us to actually make this thing happen, and then try and enforce uh, it, f- enforce it. It's you. Ju- the only people that make money are the lawyers, 
it's like even even at at my company like we've had the it's really funny because like people are like well you can't you can't go and plagiarize other people's work and it's like okay everybody stands on on the shoulders of greatness and everybody copies and, and cheats and steals and looks at other people's ideas that's just the way it works uh, but we've we've done we've designed buildings where a year or two later like we'll see down the road like oh they very very much copied what we did here they just didn't do it as good yeah and so there always the conversation comes up it's like okay well should we sue these guys okay well yeah we could try but how are we going to prove it number one even if we could prove it how much money are we going are we going to spend trying to fight this thing is it even worth it yeah you know? well here's here's and this is the great this is the mark garagos adam carolla thing there is you get to a certain point in life where you have uh f u money which is yeah. like yeah you know i have enough money to fight you over whatever and then you mm-hmm. get ultra rich is where and then you get fuck me money which is you get to screw yourself to prove it a, a really insignificant point beyond hurting the other person like you have so much <laughs> money you just you can destroy yourself you, not destroy yourself but you can literally take the hurt that goes past getting mm-hmm. what was supposed to be corrected and to just hurting you just to prove your point. So you get the the F me money. And so right. like we all should strive to one day have F me money. Yeah, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep playing this. Oh, that was funny. So I don't – neither Andrea, Andrea nor I know gambling. We just don't know it. It's not our thing. Yeah. And so like my son's like, you need to go and bet $10 on the slot machines. We're like, okay, sure. We'll do it just for you, buddy. So we go down there and – I, I took a video of it. We're like we're wandering around the casinos looking at these slot machines, and the only slot machines we really understand are the kind you put the quarter in and you pull the handle, yeah. and the the wheels spin. But these things have these big giant screens and stuff doing this, that, and the other. And I kid you not, we were we were walking for like thirty minutes looking at these things, trying to figure out how the thing even worked before we found that you're supposed to put like your credit card or a dollar bill into this little slot thing. Yeah. And then finally, like, cool, we did it. We we put it in there, and then we start pressing the button, and about a minute later, the ten dollars was up, and we're like, "Well, that was stupid." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's somebody you just look down there, just smoking a cigarette, taking a sip out of the drink, hitting the button again. Let's roll yeah. another one. Roll another yeah. one. No. And I'm like, I do I do not get. I don't get it. I know a lot of people love it. I think that's awesome, but I do not understand the slot machines. Cards are fun. I'll say cards yeah. are fun. Uh, let's see from Andrew Roderick. Uh, how does Tom feel about FedEx's new commercials? Uh, Tall tales of true deliveries. Delivering rings to a beach wedding seems far fetched. Have you ever responded to a note slash request while delivering packages? Yeah, but if the note slash request is ridiculous, I'm I'm not. What do, what do we think that like I I have enough seniority, but like oh oh I see them down on the beach. All right, I'll go down and go make a delivery. But if there's like some oh, hey you got to go around and do this because we're just like. No, bitch, you paid the same amount. I I hit the door, I hit the doorbell, I hit the truck. Like that's that's the way it's gonna go. Like it so the like one of these one of these crazy things now is like we have these uh since everyone's on a CPAP machine, like get a hold of yourself, people. Stop eating the Twinkies. Everyone's yeah. on a CPAP <laughs> machine. And so it's just like Oh, we have the CPAP, and then you take the old CPAP machine and you put it in here, and then you give them the new CPAP machine, and then you take the box back. It's like, but if they don't have the old CPAP machine, what am I supposed to do? I go to this super nice house, a six million dollar house on my on my neighborhood, and on my route, and I go out there like, oh, well, that old CPAP machine's in Mexico with her; they're on vacation. It's like, okay, well, I can't give you the new one till I get the old one. Well, we would really like the the new one now. And that way, it's here for when she comes back. It's like I'm well, sorry. It's I, some butts for candy and nuts. We'd all have a merry Christmas. I, I can't do that. Well, we need that to happen. And it's just like no. So if someone leaves a note that says, "Hey, we're having a wedding in the backyard," it'd be like okay, like I'll walk around to the backyard. But if it's, "Hey, could you please call this person to have this done to do that?" It's like no. I got stuff to do with my life. This is a freaking customer yeah. service. We gotta make up. We gotta make a profit here. It's ridiculous. And honestly, FedEx drivers can't pass a drug test. So if you tell them to take their rings down to the beach, they're going to pawn that shit. They're pirates. We all know it. They're pirates. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. FedEx sucks. FedEx sucks. Except for when they actually deliver stuff I need. Then then I, I love you guys. Please keep it a little delivering my stuff. CHPWS used uh two day air UPS, the one of the finest products. And I let me let me tell you, you got my the CH precision CHPWS, whatever that company likes to go by. Uh they called me when they received it. They double checked my order. It was affordable. They got it back to me in twelve days from when I shipped it. The milling was fantastic. Everything worked out great. They sent it in a box, two-day air, signature required, so no one else would jack it. I mean, for a, I think I paid a hundred and thirty something dollars for that. There, it was phenomenal service. So if you, the you have somebody that you like and they don't have the cut you like, uh, check out C and H Precision. Their plates, their aluminum plates, I'm not the biggest fan of. Their steel plates are probably great, but their their milling service was was uh, yeah 10 out of 10 couldn't couldn't recommend them highly enough that's nice that's good to, that's good to hear because i had such negative uh i just didn't have good results with uh, the aluminum plates and so it kind of really kind of hurt my feelings towards them yep no I, I i i've been in the same boat uh let's see from our good friend alex mansfield what's robert's favorite taylor swift song that's easy delicate from the Reputation album. Oh, I thought it was Bad Blood because that song was about you two breaking up. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> no. no, I like Delicate. It's always been a good song. Uh, let's see. Who is running in the Area 1 special election? Well, I don't know who else is running, but the only person that you should even consider is a lovely gentleman by the name of Jim Boone. And if you vote for anybody but Jim Boone, I will find you. And I will probably have to kill you. All right. Well, there Moving you go. On. Jin Boom better be an angel if he turns out to be a shithead going for the other side. Blame that guy. Oh, I'll find him and I'll kill him. <laughs> and I'll kill him. <laughs> it's all solved so, with murder. Didn't you know? We can solve it with murder. Uh, I, I, I mean, Dan Ward. So okay here's. Dan, we get to the classifier yesterday, and Dan Ward makes me a bet. He says, I bet you, Dan's shooting limited major, I'm shooting, you know, CEO minor. And I've been off for five months, and Dan goes, I bet you a 16-ounce drink of your choice that I can beat you on this classifier. And I go, Dan, you're on. I'm in it for a Diet Coke, and you're in it for murder, one, because I want the blood of a virgin. And so, and then, like, everyone's kind of <laughs> laughing, and then I shoot it. And I, and I put an M run up. I, I put an M class run up on it. And I was like, oh, that was pretty awesome. And then Dan shoots it and Dan comes back. And mine was 9.67. And Dan comes back with a 9.66. And so the whole day it was phenomenal. And I literally told Dan, I was like, okay, we'll, we'll reshoot it. And I shot terrible. I shot a no shoot and screwed up. And I tried to go a half second faster. And I was a half second faster. The points decided not to come along with me. But I told Dan, start on this inside target, shoot this outside one as you're walking away, and then immediately transition over the other one. You'll be half a hit half a hit factor point higher just by getting off the clock a little bit faster. So Dan does it, and then Dan comes around with like a 10-point something in limited. And I'm like, I told you. I told you you'd do it. And he goes, you were exactly right. It is exactly 0.5 of a hit factor faster by starting on that different <laughs> target. I was like, there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a fun time. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, let's see. From oh, what, good Dan, shot. Dan also complained about his knees, like like he might need to get his knees replaced in another six years. And I was like, don't worry about it, Dan. You're only living another five. Mm -hmm. So you'll be all right. Don't worry about see? it. See? Murder <laughs> solves all problems. <laughs> uh, let's see. From, uh, and from Sean Edmonds, when is Andy Erickson going to open up a discussion for him for his show? I have no idea. Well, if he's gonna, I mean, if he's let's, running, let's see if his show actually lasts longer than you know, like a hundred episodes. Oh, when you get to four hundred, come talk to us, Andy. Yeah, come talk to us, and also like, uh, you should come on here as a candidate, and we'll interview you as a candidate, which means we'll just make jokes. We'll make jokes the yeah. whole time, because that's what we do. Because we love. Because we love. Uh, from Yiman Lin. El Presidente himself. When am I going to run out of places to stop the bleeding and have to start cutting off limbs to save the USPSA body? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> tell the, it's really simple. You grab those people by the throat. You tell those motherfuckers to stop doing dumb shit. Well, here's the, here's the other thing. Like, that dad voice. So like where you look your son in the eye and you're like, 
I made you. With and with my God, I will make another one to replace you. I I can end you. The uh the one thing the one thing that's funny is like it's so what's so funny about this is like we there's so much turnover in the board we don't even have to wait for every january to have a couple new members of the board like there's there's always some special election or some shit because that's going on so like help could be oh how would how would i say this i think there was one side of the board who's very hesitant about having members of their board on their side resign or do anything else with because I think they know that the special elections aren't going to go their way. And so that's why there's talk of bringing Sherwin back. And there was talk of Bruce Gary coming back. And there is all this kind of talk that ended up not being happened. Because there's a very much a high wishfulness that, oh, like, Mel's leaving. Let's cram another stooge in there as quickly as we're possible. It's like, no, we're going to put it up for a vote. It's like, no, let's not do the vote. Not, not the, and also, we should have the... Uh, the uh, the committee for public safety, man. Or what was it? What was it? Rose Pierre when they had the bloody French Revolution and they were cutting everyone's head off. It was like the uh, the committee for public safety, uh, the uh, the committee for public USPSA safety to go into discipline over members. It's like okay, okay. You see where this is going? Yeah, this is this is. Oh my gosh! Yeah, for the good of the sport, go fuck yourselves. Get off, yeah, leave, it's... leave, have an election. You're going to be voted out. The sport's going to self-correct here in a couple of years. Everyone's, it's all going to get better. It is all going to get better. So they, they've they lost. They're lost and they're in the, the death throes of losing. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the big thing, the big thing you got to worry, you got to be concerned about is, I mean, like they're, they're losing money. There's no doubt about it. They're absolutely losing money Yep. with all these clubs. And I mean, how much? is going to be the real the real indicator here i mean is it is it 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 whatever it is but at a certain point i mean one of the big things that the board of directors is there to do is to protect the fiduciary interests of the organization and if you have board members who are actively promoting and pursuing policies that are causing the membership to leave or to otherwise stop sending money to the organization then an argument at that point has to be made that you're no longer acting in the fiduciary interest of the organization. Yep. And at that point, thank you for your service. Don't let the door hit your way on, hit you on the way out, but please go. And that's a reality. But I think, I, I think with Barry and Rizzy, uh, Jim Boone was just announced as the uh, he's going to, going to be the interim area one director, and I have very high hopes for him. I think he's I think he's a good dude. So, I I think area three is still waiting on the results of whatever the Delaware attorney that they were was it the Delaware attorney or whatever uh, says the and whatever. What is her name? Karen Funston or something like that. I mean, whatever she says, it depends. I mean, is the are the areas going to then is Area Three going to continue revolting or are they going to? Well, I think um, come back. I mean, I think if you get Scott or Andy, no matter like here's well, here's here's they're, how... they're going to put they're going to try and put Faust in, Luke Faust, as the interim because that's who they re that's who they recommended originally. But for Faust to get in there as the interim, then that means that. Um, that Scott Armberg doesn't really have a way back. Yep. And so that's, uh, this is the way I see it. So like you get Jim, you get Frank, you have Ben, you have he -Man. there's four out of the nine. And then whatever happens and area three has a very high percentage chance of becoming the fifth vote. And then all of a sudden I, I wouldn't like if they get all vote together and well, that's the one thing, uh, I, I very much think that a lot of those guys, they're not like a, a team, but they are very much independently minded and they, they, they're done with the bullshit. Like, I don't think there's a big collusion on their side to try to like do things or throw people out like there is on the other side. I just think it's a, it's a better, I, I think there is a super high percentage chance that this is basically the majority on a well-meaning, better thought outside is literally a few months away. I think sometimes I agree with you. I think sometimes when you have a, such a negative 
um, past, sometimes the best thing you can do is to, um, you know, wipe the proverbial slate and start over. And that's going to take some time. You're going to have to, you're going to have to see, um, people, uh, removed from the board that are no longer, um, that are, that were a part of all of those old changes. And then the new board is then going to come in with a bit of a mandate and basically, you know, Hey, you guys, let's, let's actually do things that are in the best interest of the organization. And ideally, ideally that happens. I mean, a board should, I mean, the live streaming these board meetings should be boring. They, I mean, they should arguably be just stupid, boring stuff. They shouldn't be but, episodes of Geraldo. Yeah. And that's, that's what they seem to have become. And in the end, I mean, people, people still just want to go shoot their matches. Yep. Uh, and it, it's it's get, funny that I was going to say uh, nationals opened. So we, we gave out all of our slot codes for nationals. And then Nationals uh, ended up being $400 to shoot. And um, that's not insignificant. That's a, ch that's a chunk of change. There's no doubt about that. And I kind of heard people – it was really funny to me because I heard people, they were complaining, they were complaining about the $400 uh, cost, and yet it wasn't even a week or two before that. These same people were talking about how USPSA is losing money and they need to stop losing money. And it's like, okay, well, this is what it costs to run nationals um, this year, and you want, but you want them to stop losing money, but you don't want to actually have to actually pay money. So, do you not see kind of like the discrepancy here? At a certain point, you know, yes, we, yes, they have to go and solve like some of the money going out, but at the same time, if nationals cost this much money because of the cost of what it takes to bring in ROs and all these other things, nationals then, loses money just on nationals losing money every year. Yeah, and and honestly. Uh, Scott Armberg is like, you know, Nationals doesn't have to make money. And I understand that argument to an extent. But the reason that you have loss leaders is because you expect to make it up on somewhere else. And if you're not making it up somewhere else, then your loss leaders just become big, giant losses. Well, I, I would I would recommend this, like charge more, charge more for um, charge more for majors if you want to charge more for your Nationals or whatever like that. And then, like, keep the membership prices, the annual renewing prices, bring them back down. That's that's what the I they made a gank of money on five hundred dollar life memberships. So maybe that's something that they could uh, fly by every once in a while, every every so year few years to sit there and bring in some stuff. Because like the way that things are starting to turn around now, I, I'm very happy with my life membership. Yeah. So, well, and I mean, functionally, you, you spoke about it. It's like, you know, like me buying a life membership doesn't mean that I um, agree with or support um, elements of the organization. It just means that I, I get to shoot you. that available. I get yeah, to shoot get USPSA to for cheaper for the rest of my life. That's exactly what it means to me. And my, right. my, my uh, and your opinions weighted a little bit more uh, when you send the email in telling everyone that they're a dickhead. So, yeah. Hooray. There you go. That's That was the last question. Awesome. Well, uh, we hope you guys enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday. We hope you guys that your team or your bets go through and that you make all the money on all the stupid prop bets while watching your Pfizer commercials. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Thanks for hopping in. Thanks for downloading. Thanks uh, for subscribing and doing all that stuff. You can check this out on YouTube if you want to see the uh, bed tent and Pablo Picasso peeking over the uh, Fallout helmet in the background of Robert's uh, video feed. So check all of that stuff out, and we'll see you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I get, that's not how I end the show. I say for Robert Wyatt, I'm Tom Nelson. I've been bidding you peace, love, and soul as we depart into the open waters of the Sea of Life on a little tugboat we like to call the Paracast. Good night, everybody. <laughs>